Hello and welcome to the Global Poker League. You're watching live. We are from Las Vegas. This is the summer series. Yesterday, we saw an awesome match. Kevin McPhee of the New York Rounders is able to beat Timothy Adams of the Rome Emperors two games to one. He took six points for Bryn Kenny's side. Today, we have another great match lined up for you. It's Jonathan Little of the Las Vegas Moneymakers versus Mike Lear of the Paris Aviators. Hello, get... Joe's babies. Look at this. Joe's off today, so you're stuck with me and with Laura, but I mean, that's a pretty good deal. This Cornelius, is, what's going on? This is a totally new experience for me. Never been here before behind the desk. We will be a expecting expert uh, commentary. Like the, the way Jonathan Little and Mike Leo might uh, explain hands, that's what we need from you, Laura, today. So no pressure whatsoever. Absolutely none, no. Uh, we've had a great start to the week. Uh, oh, we're in, what day? Day six? Day seven? What are day you talking seven? about? Day seven? How day many days? Seven. It's all. There's been a lot of days. There's been <laughs> a lot, a lot of, of matches here from the Summer Series, live from Las Vegas. What has been your favorite match so far? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. I, I think, to be honest, I think Kevin McPhee has been my favorite moment so far. He played amazing poker. I'm not kidding, Laura. He made some folds that were spectacular. I think there was a lot of people, people criticizing McPhee after a slow start in the, to the season, but I was really impressed. I, not that I should be. Over $12 million in combined uh, live and online earnings, but I was happy for Kevin as well. I think he was a little you know, down in the dumpsters after being criticized for not playing yeah. so well earlier this season, which was basically no fault of his own, right? Both matches, just bad coolers that Adam scores zero points for a team that is expected to be at the top of the conference. So really a redemption day for McPhee, and he was great in the cube, actually. I really felt like he did think he had something to prove. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't so jovial when he came in, and then the time he got in the cube, he just, his mood just changed. Yeah. It got better and better and better. He was getting more excited. I think he really enjoyed himself, actually. I think it's the extreme heat. I think it's the 100-degree yeah, weather in there. So, no, no, no. I guess the two players coming into the cube today shouldn't be, should have been warned about that. Yeah. Or maybe not. <laughs> Luckily, those jerseys, we give them, they're kind of sweat-friendly. <laughs> yes, luckily. <laughs> we saw the New York Rounders obviously go from fourth place to third place yesterday. Uh, so McPhee was also uh, really good and able to elevate the team up one spot in the America's Conference. Yeah, and it'll be curious to see what happens today. We have two matches on top uh, on tap for you today. Las Vegas Moneymakers are first in the queue. That's Jonathan Little back in action. Uh, really a good start for the year for, uh, for him. And then we follow that up. Now there he is, Jonathan Little on screen. Uh, one of the two top scorers for this Las Vegas team. It's not been a great start to the year. We'll be able to talk to, to Jonathan about that. He uh, he gets to play Mike Leah, or Mike Leah, sorry. As of a few hours ago, he thought he was playing George Danzer, yeah. so we'll see how that happens. George Danzer, shockingly, has made a deep run in another Mixed Games tournament at the World Series of Poker. That never seems to happen to George Danzer whatsoever. No. <laughs> Mike, Mike Leah, I'm sure he's already registered for 20 to 25 tournaments later on today, but he decided to, uh, to substitute in. Uh, Mike uh, loves to play some poker at any at any stakes. That'll be an interesting match. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Las Vegas plays. Paris is another team that really started off well and hasn't been playing yeah. so well lately, so Mike will uh, will have to stop the bleeding, but he's been one of the most entertaining players so far this season. Fabrice Soulier obviously played Aaron Paul, the first ever match live from Las Vegas. He was only able to get three points, better than zero points, though. But actually, it had been his most successful uh, game so far, picking yeah, up those say, three points. It almost matched his season total, uh, yeah. you know, so he's up to seven Seven points now, so I think Fabrice will be uh, great to go. You know, good to go his next match in the cube. But uh, Aaron Paul, wow, did he not play really well? He really played well. Yeah, we've got not just one match coming for you today, though, but two. The first day we've ever done this. So, uh, yeah, that's the next one coming up for you. It's Mark Andre Laduser, the manager of the Montreal Nationals, versus Igor Yaroshevsky of the Moscow Wolverines. Uh, Mark Andre flown in specially just for this match. Yeah, talk about commitment. Mark Andre has only only has uh, Martin Jakobsen here so far and Jakobsen he knew that Jakobsen would be doing you know playing a day two 
at some point on Sunday. So Mark making the wise decision because Jakobsen didn't make day two of the Millionaire Maker, has a lot of chips. So the smart move by the manager, flying down from Montreal to Las Vegas, that nice little six hour flight last night. He showed up here around 11 p.m. So uh, he might be a one for the taking. yarshevsky has been here since the start of the series. So he's been mm. here about two weeks. Getting used we'll to have the vibe. to see. The yeah. heat. That's right. I did talk to Mark this morning and he was at the gym as all Montreal Nationals seems to seem to do before their matches. I'm not jealous at all by the uh, the good-looking Nationals. The Nationals will have the gym. Uh, let's take a look at the Eurasian standings, how they are right now. London Royals, we've only seen Chris Mormon play this week for the London Royals so far. How did he get on? Well, he lost to uh, to Scott Ball of the Moneymakers. That was an important victory for the Moneymakers. Uh, so, yeah, the good news for the, the Royals, the first team to hit 100 points so far this year in the Eurasia Conference. They're at the top of the table so far. Uh, the Moscow Wolverines get in the cube later on today. They'll have a chance to actually surpass uh, the Royals in, a, in the next few hours. Hong Kong next. The Aviators, who are up next in the cube. Mike Leah will have to score some points here because the team has been struggling, Laura, as of late. Another loss. Uh, earlier this week, you mentioned Aaron Paul defeating Fabrice Soulier. The Bears and the Emperors, the Emperors missing a huge opportunity yesterday to score some points. Only three points from the Bears like yesterday, uh, sorry, for the Emperors, but it was a really good match. And Jeff Gross, of course, playing so well so far this season. Ta da! We just hey. magic to surprise guest here, Jonathan Little of the Las Vegas Moneymakers, who is going to be playing today. Are you excited? I'm happy to be here. Kind of nervous. No. <laughs> it's cold outside, but I heard it's hot inside the cube. And <laughs> it's I'm freezing in Las Vegas. <laughs> I'm ready to crush Mike. Let's go. I like it. I like it. Let's make the aviators crash. Oh, oh. look at that. Look at that. Crush them. If you're so fans, crash. Of crash them, crush them. <laughs> yeah. Yes. If like us, if you're fans of Jonathan, by the way, he'll be stepping in the booth, stepping into the booth uh, during match number two with me, uh, because you'll have your fill of Laura Cornelius after a few yeah, hours. You'll have enough of me. Yeah, the accent gets to you uh, very quickly. <laughs> Jonathan, we have talked about the, the team's struggles, uh, you know, out of the gate. Uh, one thing that I want to talk about, I'm going to steal one of Laura's questions. <gasps> I want to talk about Scott Ball because I think. He was disrespected, you know, or maybe uh, <laughs> underestimated when the mm. league started. But this man has, you know, put in hours and hours of work to, specifically to play in the GPL, and he's fared very well. I was a big proponent of getting Scott Ball on the team. You were. I wanted to get him on there. I knew he'd be a good thing for the league, for our team in general. And he's not disappointed. He's mm. put, put on a show pretty much every time he's played, and he has, I think, the best results on the team. For the so. team, yeah. That's fortunate. Our team has not done very well in the six-handed portion. I think we've pretty much held our own heads up, but yep. six-handed, we have not been able to get early double-ups and then be able to win. I mean, that's really how you rack up the points yep. very quickly is winning six-handed, and I've done poorly. Everyone's done poorly besides, I think, Anthony Zeno, and I guess Scott's done pretty good yeah. as well, so... We have to step it up in those six-handed games. Yeah. yeah, well, luckily, it's only heads up while we're in Las Vegas. I was going to ask you, though, you've, you've played both now, six max and heads up. Which format do you prefer? Well, I'm doing way better heads up, so I guess that <laughs> <Yeah>. one. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go for that one. Are you excited to play? You've had a sneak peek in the cube. You've been in there. You felt what it's like. Are you ready for three games in there? I'm ready. We got to get in some practice with the application. I'm ready to go. How different do you think it's going to be in there to playing, you know, like a normal tournament event, WSOP? Heads up. It's going to be similar but different. A hybrid, yeah. A hybrid, and I'm, I'm good at learning new things quickly, so let's, let's do it. All right, yeah, so am I today, yeah. apparently. We were talking, <laughs> just quickly, we were talking earlier about the fact that you and Mike basically started on the circuit on this, in the same year, 2006 already. Boy, it's, it's, been, so, it's been so long. Um, talk about Mike. Talk about your adversary, because he is quite, uh, quite a form, formidable opponent. Mike is great. I was studying some of the tape this morning of Mike, and I didn't really see much I could take advantage of, so... Yeah. I'm just going to go in there and do my best. He's been around as long as I have, maybe longer, and he's put up consistent results throughout his whole career, and he's certainly a world-class player. Yeah, 15 results already this season for Mike Thea. That's just not even human. That's more than my one or two. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to see how you fare. Jonathan Little will be entering the cube very shortly. Best of luck to you. One person who did come and play in the cube this week was another Paris aviator, just like Mike Lear. It was Aaron Paul. Check this he's out. He's not an aviator. He no, plays for the sunset. But Fabrice Soulier ah. played him, is what I meant. <laughs> when you're playing the World Series, you're sitting down, drinking, you're eating, you're getting massages. The cube's very intense. Uh, it's hot. You're staring down your opponent, who happens to be one of the biggest poker pros out there. And you're, you're hearing... Braveheart-esque 
like soundtrack in your ears, the noise canceling headphones, but you're just hearing the soundtrack mixed with loud heartbeats. And so it's a little nerve wracking. It's great. When there's you know an audience cheering you on, you wanna you wanna make you wanna make them proud. I feel good about today. Yeah, two out of three is not bad. Um, I mean, we both wanted this third one very bad. It was, looked like it was going in his favor, then in mine, and then it started falling apart towards the end. But uh, you know, I came through. I didn't let him win. He just slaughtered me, outplayed me. The pressure's on. You're gonna ruin my series, man. I'm, I'm here for the World Series. Oh, man. Like for one month. You know? If I lose no, I'm three zero, corner, no, I'm okay. You can take less work. I'm okay. okay. Yeah, you sure? It's fine. You heard him. Either way, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy I met you. I'm happy I played with you. Either way, I'm fine. But at least I won one. You know, three points. You got three points, it's good. It's really good. Maurice Soulier of the Paris Aviators, the manager, in fact. We are now joined by another Paris Aviator, Mike Lear. Did you watch the Aaron Paul uh, versus your manager game? I watched bits of it. I was busy playing, but I, uh, I had it on my phone while I was playing. What have you thought um, to your manager so far? Uh, what's it been like with him? Have you shared much insight, strategy talk? Yeah, we've, we talked a lot before the World Series. Um, since we all got here, you know, we're all a lot busier, so it's kind of just been... Uh, you know, going day by day. Yeah, just busy, crushing every tournament alive. Uh, yeah, hasn't gone that way so far this summer, but uh, it's a long summer. So. Just to quickly some housekeeping, Laura. First off, of course we can't get enough of Laura. She'll be around, don't worry about it. She's just doing seven jobs today, so that's why we'll get Jonathan As in the booth. As opposed to the usual six. That's right. <laughs> and for those asking where Joe is, Joe is away on assignment for a few days. He'll be back on Friday, so don't worry about it. We'll get Joe back. He's we not, really. he's not really been suspended, or maybe he was suspended. <laughs> Mike, let's talk about the fact. I said 15 results. I love it was 14 results oh, okay. so far this season, but that's like two a month. And let's be honest, Mike, you're no longer a 21-year-old, but you are scoring way more than those 21-year-olds. How do you still do it? Um, I play a lot of poker. <laughs> <laughs> so if you play a lot, you'll probably have more results. Sir, you're too humble because I do know you play a lot, but you do manage to, to, you know, to make quite a good living out of it. And it's been yeah. a few years now. How do, how do you explain your consistency? Um, I'm just very competitive. If I'm yeah. playing, you know, I, I want to do well. So... Um, that, that's about it. Love it. Let's talk about the aviators, though, because you yep. had such a flying start, mind the pun, and yeah. you've uh, sunk a little bit. You're down to uh, third fourth, or fourth now. I think yeah. fourth place. Fourth. Yeah, we were in first place after my last heads up match. Um, I can't get us back there today, but hopefully we'll take a step back to that direction. And, uh, you know, we're only you know, just over a third of the way into the season. So long ways to go, and uh, we're going to try and get back on top. And Jonathan Little is your opponent today. Yep. Have you played much with him in the real world? Yeah, me and John have, you know, we both started around the same time. We have similar backgrounds, so I've known John a long time. Um, I'm looking forward to the match. It should be, uh, should be a lot of fun. Okay, we're going to take a look at the standings as they are the uh, America's Conference standings. Uh, and we're going to go and get Mike ready for the cube. Thanks, Good luck, Mike. Mike. So and Montreal he's... Nationals at the top, and they have been at the top for quite some time now, haven't they? That's right, Laura. Uh, Mike Le Leah is a country of uh, love, of course. The Montreal Nationals representing Canada in the GPL, 115 points. It's, it, it, you know, the, the season started well for them. There was a little lull in the middle, Laura, but they have been on fire since. And I would not expect anything different from, from La Dussard uh, just in a few hours. So it's scary to see how far ahead Montreal is of a playoff spot compared, you know, 40-point lead on San Francisco Rush. That might not be attainable. So it looks like for the rut and the money makers, the goal now is to just make the playoffs. There, there might not be a shot at the conference. It is the first thing. It is the first thing you want to do is win the conference. Bragging rights are on the line. Montreal and LA seem set up to to battle for that. Although Montreal is a 14 point lead yeah, on second place quite LA. A lead, isn't it? Yeah, without Aaron Paul's six points, it would have been a, you know, an even bigger lead. We saw Martin Jakobsen sweep earlier this week during Heat one play. So boy, that team is just on fire. And what's pretty amazing about that team, Laura, is that they've really spread things out. So that, you know, La, La Francoise played a few more times than any other player but it's still very very much spread out so that's scary to see a team that's spreading their, their the love with their players and they're all performing that could be the team to watch heading into uh, San Diego well luckily we will get to talk to the manager of the top scoring Montreal Nationals Marc-Andre Ladouceur very very soon and talking of top scorers here are the top scorers so far in the GPL no surprises that LA Sunsets Olivier Bousquet is at the top but only by one point 
Yeah, Fedor Holtz, of course, is it's because he's winning everything at Aria. He, he doesn't is doing have time. ridiculously. Yeah, I was talking to Fabrice Soulier earlier today, and Fedor Holtz is just having just a ridiculous season. You know, if you look at his stats since December of last year, that's just six months ago. It's really quite remarkable what he's done on the tour, and look, he had, look at what he's doing in the GPL as well. Had actually a slow start to the year, Laura. He's picked things up. Now, the thing is with LA, they've really put all their eggs in two baskets so far this year. Bousquet and Holtz playing a lot. They might be capped as soon as a few weeks from now, so so uh, Maria Ho will have some decisions to make. She'll have to start herself you know, more often. Chance Corneth and the rest of that team. Eugene Kachlov has only played a few times. So those players will need to play more because at some point Maria might want to hold off on playing Bousquet uh, maybe once or twice because if he does get capped, there's a lot of heads-up play at the end of the year, Laura, heading into the playoffs. You want to make sure your top players are available if ever you would need either you know, a spot in the playoffs or for the, uh, the sunset, maybe a chance at first place. So it'll be interesting to see how Maria handles that. Interestingly enough, uh, the top two scorers there, Federholz and Olivier Bosquet, both LA Sunset, who are not top of the league, Montreal Nationals, and the only player they had it in the top scorers was Martin Jakobsen, who was in fifth place. Yeah, and that goes to show that they're spreading things out, whereas Maria really concentrated on those two players. I can't blame Maria. They are so hot right now on tour, and Bousquet is such an amazing heads-up player. Why not? Why not ride the wave, get as many points from those guys as possible? But again, she'll have some very, very tough decisions to make in the next few weeks, and she's got to put the other the pl other players in the rotation because if they do make the playoffs those players will be required to play as well so it'll be interesting to see what Maria does in the second half. Well we can check that Montreal Nationals game later that is against the Moscow Wolverines. Now though it is time for the Las Vegas Moneymakers and they are going to be playing the Paris Aviators. Players please enter the cube. Time to go. There's a bag of rocks. Are we playing as a set? I think we're playing. Okay. Have fun. Good luck. I went already. It's your turn. Yeah. Thinking. Just trying to figure out what the blinds are. Two, four. Mike Leah already representing his home team, the Toronto Raptors, who, uh, of course, made it to the semifinals of the NBA playoffs, losing to the mighty Cleveland Cavaliers. But, uh, a great performance by Cal Lowry and the Raptors this year. Laura, I know you are tuning into every Raptors match this year. Oh, I love it. Love the Raptors. The love everything they stand for. Thank you. Laura Cornelius also was witness to her first curling match earlier this year. I that did. That was exciting. February. Yep. Live from LA. Live from LA. Team Canada won that world championship. You can feel the intensity. Yeah, these two guys are very polite, they're very nice, but when it comes to poker, they are very serious about Look it. Look at those smiles. Success. Oh, hello. Mike Leah doing great so far. It's easy to play well when you get those cards, Laura. I could even win this pot. You could. <laughs> I'd find a way to screw it up. <laughs> great camera angle there. Fair result. Yeah. It's hard to know what I even put in. I'm like, my, did, did he minery raise me or something? Yeah, no, I, I don't really know. Trying to figure out the <laughs> sizing, sorry. As we know, it takes the players a little while to get to grips with the software. Normally by hand, 10, 12, yeah. they get a little bit more settled into the swing of things. The chat gets a bit more, they start relaxing a little. By game three, playing football in there sometimes. <laughs> Call button's an easy one to figure out. Hmm. You can see the chippo meter just down at the bottom there. That's just a new addition in the last couple of days. So you're now able to see the big blinds per player as well. You can just see Mike slightly in front with 127 right now. We 
see Mike with a better hand, but very dangerous cards on the board here. No one with any diamonds. Didn't know what you were clicking over there. Me neither. Whose jersey do you prefer? Do you like the gray or do you like the white? I think I like the classic home white in this situation. It's a, it's a great jersey. I think the team coming up, I think the Wolverines is the, my favorite so far. It's just yeah. a nice jersey. Michael Lea has hit every single hand so far. Oh, you can see by the person's hand. That was a good flop for you. If you're just tuning in, that's right. No oh. stapes today. No stapes for the next few days. He's away on assignment. Don't worry, kids. He told me to take care of the babies for a few days. He will be back on uh, Friday. We are off tomorrow. Dark dark day tomorrow, Laura. We get a day off. We get a day. Well, we're not told here. Me no water in the queue. What is that? Really? Mm. Oh, it's so coconut water. Water. I see. So tilting. <laughs> <sighs> Gotta relax. <laughs> Laura, we should mention that there is air conditioning in the cube for those wondering, but the players, you know, it's still warm, but the, with the lights and with the players being nervous and you know ready to go, that's why it gets so, so hot in there after your, your second match. As we saw yesterday, the poor players were uh, drenched in sweat. Yeah, Kevin McPhee looked Bob like he'd been swimming. <laughs> Who gets the green? Oh, you got the green. Thank you for letting me win two pots. Both times I had the best hand. <laughs> oh, a deep sigh there. Weak. Interesting. Just weak. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mike again with the best hand here. A lot of clicking going on over there. Is that a min raise? Close. Close? A little bit more? If you're with us during the pre show, 14 results so far from Mike and Leah this year. That's just quite remarkable given that we're only early June here. Um, but, but it's not surprising, 155 career results, 17 victories, 71 top 10s. His most recent big score was at the WPT Falls View. He won a prelim event there, and shockingly enough, that's not the first time he's won that prelim event. So Mike travels the world, plays every single uh, you know, buy-in from a $500 tournament to a $10,000 or $25,000 tournament. Who loves it more? Probably not Mike Leah loves it more. Pot size is six before you bet. Is that accurate? Yeah. Okay. Just making, just confused. <laughs> how do you have it every time? You'll have to watch it's on TV. Pretty lucky. Is that how my wife was beating earlier when we were practicing? She just had it every time and you had nothing? Yeah. 
not to be outdone, Jonathan Little, 13 career victories. We have here two players combined 30 total victories. That's quite surprising, quite amazing. Over right. 11 million in combined earnings. I like this call button, it's my favorite one. You like the call button too? It's a good one. <laughs> It's aggressive. Both players got their start on the circuit in 2006. In January 2006, uh, Jonathan Little finished 22nd at the Jack Bingen WSOP circuit side event. Greg Murko won that event. Got a cramp. Jonathan commenting on that earlier. Make sure you don't get a cramp later. <laughs> you might try to wrestle me later, so. <laughs> Gotta be prepared. Just a few months later, Mike would get his first circuit cash, What's third in the Bellagio Cup 1K yeah, prelims. $25,000 score, not bad for your first time. I haven't folded, yeah, folded. There we go. Wow, I haven't done that in a while. Thank you. Yeah. Just want to practice it in case I need it later. Mike making the correct fold again against a better hand from Jonathan here. He's playing so well to start this match. <laughs> Sounds like a creaky floor in there. We have Dmitry Urbanovich to blame for that. He somehow has always, broken the floor. Always Urbanovich. I don't think anyone else can hear that. <laughs> oh, we can. It's always the kids. <laughs> blame the kids. Mike has a $1 million score in his career. That is a second place finish in the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Open. Finished second to Dan Coleman. That was just a few months after Coleman had won the one drop. So it was a pretty good, pretty good summer for Coleman that year. <laughs> Should value bet you here? We both have sevens? No. Oh. Wow, you just said nothing. <laughs> it's seven. No equity. Well, that. <laughs> Next time you just have nothing, please let me know. All right. Mike also the king of F-Tops jerseys. He has so many, he has a closet full of them as we've seen earlier this year, this Is season. How many X did you make it? I think three, I don't know. <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? We've seen Jonathan play a lot of online matches right. and offer so much insight to his hands. This is completely different for him. He can't say anything. <laughs> yeah, he's staring down the, uh, <laughs> a pretty spectacular poker player, so he needs to, to concentrate Perfect. a bit more. Good All job. Right. I'll take it. I hadn't decided if I was defending that one. It's close. <sighs> That's what happens when Jonathan Little gives a walk. He has to I gotta walk it off. <laughs> I'm a little bit tilted after that one, I'm not gonna lie. Not much space <sighs> to walk. Please. No. <laughs> Hello, Twitch audience. There he is. Thank you for being here today. Oh. Hello, Canada. And Paris. Hello, America. Salud. Oh, boy. Las Vegas. <laughs> Holla. <laughs> Hard to dislike, Jonathan. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. <laughs> Yeah, like a deuce. Both just with a high card here. Giving up. I just give it to you sometimes. All right. I'll yeah. take it. Yeah, you can have it. That's fair. You don't seem like a folder of King High. Wow, 7-2 offsuit. As you've seen earlier this time. season, Mike Lea, <laughs> Lea is not <laughs> a folder of anything. We saw a spectacular match against Anatoly oh, Filatov. Yeah, yeah. Maybe by the next match we'll be ready for, for that. We saw so many hands in yesterday's matches. I wonder if it will be similar today. Jonathan wisely checking here. Another big hand for Mike. I have my button, so I'll improvise. <laughs>
Jonathan Little, not only a renowned book so author. Click fold, but, and it's usually on the left. And that would have been Ray's. That would have been it interesting. Change? No, like you oh, know, like if online you're, poker. Like if you're online. Yeah. I see. It's also the WPT season six player of the year when the Mirage Poker Showdown for over a million in okay. May 2007. Just a few months after that one, the WPT World Poker Martin Finals Potts, defeated like Jonathan Jaffe. Heads Chips up for that title. We've seen Jonathan Jaffe in action this week already, and we will see him again. He's coming back. He loved it so much. And news in, he's bringing his whole family to watch. That's right. Are you almost out of time bank yet? It's uh, my only shot. <laughs> I think I'm all right. Okay. So Mike has used more of his time bank. Got 13 minutes 47 at the moment. Jonathan with 15 minutes. So these guys start with 20 minutes. 20 in minutes. The summer series. <laughs> can't make them fold two pair. Don't try. It's a bad idea. <laughs> I wouldn't have tried if I had known. <laughs> so these guys cannot see out of the cube, but we can see into the cube. So any audience watching is able to see them, but they can't see nothing. They can't hear us either. Oh, That's no. sort of important. Thank goodness. And Joe's tried. We've seen Joe scream at them. Yeah. They could not hear him. What if I try a girl scream? Yeah, you've got a pretty it's kinda remarkable high like scream. Yeah. It'd probably break the glass. It probably will, and uh, make everyone switch their computer off. Nitty, just give up. Every once in a while. Don't have anything, just give up. Easy game. <laughs> Jonathan Little's career, best rank 24. Yes, yes, Mike Lear's 13, my lucky number. It's fun being in here. Oh, it's my turn. <laughs> Currently, Mike Lee is at 44 GPI world ranking and Jonathan Little's at 146. Yeah. Okay. It's important. Kid Fernandez on Twitch asking if they can hear each other, why do they have earplugs in? Well, a few different reasons, uh, Kid Fernandez. One, they can hear each other through their mics, uh, through their headphones. The headphones are also noise canceling. So any, it's like an extra layer of security. And they also listen to this beautiful music and heart pounding music in order to, uh, to get into the game as well. It would be good if we could put a monitor on them to check their pulse or their heart rate to see uh, to see who's got the fastest heart. It's uh, absolutely in the works, Laura. Yeah. You remember a, a certain British yeah, television British, poker show yeah, that used to have it? There's, there's, a, there's a British television show. It's not a poker show, but they do it as well. Oh. And they put people in certain scenarios and, and check their pulse and see how they, they react. But there was a poker show. I remember Jesse May going berserk on uh, guys' heart rates during bluffs. So. Try to find what that was, and if you're on Twitch uh, chat, let me know what that show was—a British uh, poker show where Jesse May would go crazy about heart rate. Jesse May Shocking going crazy. Shocking, Jesse May yeah. going crazy. Just over half pot. Oh, there's another sigh from Jonathan. Don't go red. Don't go red. The pressure of the cube. You're so lucky. Look, you're drawing dead again. <laughs> I'd quite like to play you in the cube, Eric. Sometimes you get lucky. You think you can handle it? Come on, Eric. Give us the cards. There you go. Oh, yeah, Jonathan asking Stop me. Stop him out. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just have it all, you know? You've got an airplane on your shirt and a chop pot. What do I have? <laughs> I have a city. You have an airplane, I have a city. And we are in that city right now. We are live from Las Vegas, also known as Sin City. Beautiful city. You've been committing many sins, Eric? Uh, no, no. I've been working. That's the sin I've been not enjoying. That's the biggest sin. The beauty of Las Vegas. <laughs> seven. You said I had a seven. Yeah. It's a good read. Yeah. <laughs> I had a king. What are you going to do? Are you one of those people that say exactly what I have and then pay it off anyway? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. You have the seven, I call. Yeah. Oh, I lose. <laughs> If you know I have the seven, you should probably go all in. Yeah, I have the king of hearts too. See that? Puts me in a horrible spot if you go all in. <laughs> wow, queen jack suited I had. Tell me that a little sooner. <sighs> both we players have been involved in both six max and heads up action. Uh, Jonathan mentioned that his team has struggled in six max play and has only picked up six points in that discipline, but his two heads up victories have given him 12 points. 
Mike has dominated in six max, three wins there, 24 points, sorry, two wins in, in six max, 24 points, a win over Filatov and made heads up for six points. 40 chips. Gotcha. And Laura, I purposely asked, I did not ask you if you were sitting in Las Vegas, because we all know. knew I was. Yep. Corn dog. <laughs> Nervous laugh. <laughs> Jonathan Little will be in the commentary box right here where I stand in the next match today, which is Igor Yaroshevsky of the Moscow Wolverines versus Mark andre Ladouceur of the Montreal Nationals. Little is such a pro that he did bring a change of clothes. If you think it's hot in the cube, you should be here at the desk, Laura. He's stripping off in front of me. Red Snowstorm says, damn, Jonathan is aggro today. Ooh, dramatic noise. That is the all-in noise. And here comes the heartbeat. Yeah, Michael loves that, of course. If you had it, you should have checked, because I would have done that. Sick bluff. Spades all round. Jonathan's built uh, quite a lead here in this match. Mike had the edge earlier by hitting everything since thing work anyway. Jonathan has been yeah, on fire. Yeah, I never had to do that. Wait, what just happened? Wait, slow the dramatic up. noise just happened. <laughs> I don't know what we're playing. Okay, 1,200, I made it 24. You went all in for oh, 22, okay. Is that what just happened? I think so. Okay, you have 25 at once, very close. What happened? I haven't done anything. I'm just oh, looking. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> observing you. Gotcha. I'm giving it to think oh, one I'm time. I have my card. You got a lot of time bank left, or no? I need to know how much time I have. I want to see all spades on the floor there. What do you want to see? <sighs> Close one. Well, spades would mean a almost guaranteed Mike Leo win. Okay, maybe you two. Know that I have <laughs> big blinds. What? Oh, maybe you don't. Six twelve. Oh, under right. under twenty. Six twelve. You went all in for. I think around 20. 20,000 chips, yeah. which is 17 big blinds or so. Okay. I think that's closer. Definitely not 25. So you're trying to talk me into a call. Okay. <laughs> Did it work? I don't know. It may. Oh, okay. I keep looking at my beautiful hand. All right. Pot is 25. I have to call 20 into 25, I think. 19 into 25, I think. All right. I'm going to have a little drink. Have a sip. God, this coconut water is so good. <laughs> Very close. Jonathan now in a tank for well over a minute. I give you one time. It's too bad. folds. Yeah. You had it one time? I don't know. No. Depends Good bluff. Good bluff. Might have been flipping, but I think I could have been dominated. Yeah. yeah. Likely. Likely. Correct fold. I wasn't dominated. Mm. Well, that's good for me. Oh, here we go. <laughs> the blinds went up. It's important. Oh. It's important. That is important. Jonathan, of course, flopping a monster. He's not getting paid off so far. Jonathan moves all in here. Said I have you zero. It's, it's, it's that I have zero chips over here. Yeah. It said stack is zero. Because they're all in. Oh, I, I see. I was confused. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Using the Kevin McPhee strategy of blaming the software it. while trying to important, but I, it doesn't tell me. Yeah. Confuse the <laughs> opponent. <laughs> I don't think you'd show the queen for value. So king or a flush. If I'd known the blinds went up, I would have shoved pre. <laughs> I wish I was trapping on the flop, but I wasn't. Can Mike get away from the 
Thanks, yeah. Mm, how much time do I got? Uh, I think that's not my call. Ooh. Oh my God. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, I have. And there we have it. Good game. Good game, thank you. All right. Do we leave or do we stay? Should we stay or should we go? Look, there's my wife out there. Yeah, I can see her You now. can see her in the light show. There's like light flashing. <laughs> yeah, you should have shoved pre-flop. Yeah, that would have been <laughs> a uh, not as bad a result. <coughs> there you have it. The, uh, the big call from Mike Lair there was incorrect. Jonathan Little getting the first three points for the Las Vegas Moneymakers, three crucial points for the team. They are now one point behind the rush. Laura just left me as she is getting set up for an interview with both of those players. We'll have to see what happens in the next uh, few moments. Textbook poker here, not, no, any, not anything we shouldn't expect from these two guys. Two solid, solid pros. Again, they've been around for 10 years now on the circuit. Great, great players, over 100 caches each. Shouldn't be surprised here by uh, the high quality of play. I just mentioned that those are important points for the money makers. However, the Paris Aviators are starting to, to fall in the standings, and they need points as well. So there's going to be some pressure on, uh, on Mike here in the second match to gain some traction back because this team has really been struggling in the last few weeks. They were the cream of the crop at first, but they have you know they have struggled. Uh, Alexandre Renault, who is in Las Vegas, has been spectacular at the World Series of Poker. So we shouldn't be surprised to see him in the cube in the near future, in in the hopes to gain some more points for the team. But again, two more games here, and Mike Leah does have a, a, an opportunity to add six points to the total of, the, of that team. Whereas Jonathan Little knows that those points are extremely crucial for the money makers as they keep on falling in the standings, and a playoff spot is starting to slip from their fingers. And I don't think that's what uh, team manager. Chris Moneymaker had in, in, in mind when he built that team earlier this season. We've seen Moneymaker struggle. He's only played once, but he struggled. Uh, Jake Cody struggled. It's been a rough start to the year. Anthony Zeno has had a great first week, but really struggled after that. So the team will need to, to pick things up in the near future. We'll have to see how that uh, works out for them. We will uh, take you now to Laura. She is with the two uh, contestants, and game two will be right after that. So Laura, back to you. I'm here on the floor now. I'm everywhere today. Jonathan Little, Las Vegas Moneymakers. Congratulations. Three <laughs> points. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, Mike. Yeah, yeah. It's all right. <laughs> How was that match for you? That last hand, uh, obviously you went for the call in the end uh, and saw you were hugely dominated. Yes. Sure, old call did not work at that no. point. <laughs> if you know how many chips he had, he would have gone all in pre-flop, so it would have been the same result. Yeah. Okay. By misplaying it, he had the chance to get off the hook. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Talk us through any... Uh, any Highlights for you, any hands in there you were playing? It was hot in there, he was drinking <laughs> coconut water, I was sweating, and he tried to get me tilted, but I stayed calm. Talked to the Twitch audience a bit, know, and they, they kept me there, they kept me sane. Were you nervous? Yes. Yeah, they thought you were nervous. There I was still a, there am was a nervous. few deep breaths. Could you, yes. could you notice any tells? No. Maybe he could. No, could you? Nothing. No, not no? really. Because people are saying, like, <laughs> stood up, obviously, there's a lot more that could be noticed. Right. Yeah, no, I, I didn't pick up anything yet. We are both somewhat stoic people in general when we play poker. We're not like all over the place. And so I don't think there's going to be much to be picked up between the two of us. But I can certainly see it with other people who are mm -hmm. running around the cube and having a party. <laughs> are we going to see a party in game two or three? Not for me. Uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll try and if throw a win. little party. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> can we come? We've got two uh, people here. Yes, could be, could be Every, everyone can come. <laughs> Las Vegas Money Makers needed those points badly, has to be said. We need about 37 more points, I think, yeah, to be in third place. Unfortunately. So we won't get them today, but I'll, I'll do my best to get six more. Yeah. How are you feeling for uh, game two? Pumped, uh, ready to take yeah, it back? Yeah, this next match is important. Hopefully I can get this one, and then uh, I'll make the last one the... Uh, the decider so just so you know i've played two heads up matches and i've won the first two both times yeah and i've played one and i won the first two but i'm time. still on the same streak yeah that's true <laughs> <laughs> you cannot continue not. the streak that's right <laughs> you're correct okay guys yeah. leave it for in there i think uh, all right we're gonna head to game two very shortly these guys will be up against it back in the cube for game two but first let's head to a very short commercial break can't get enough of the GPL? Head over to globalpokerleague.com for the most complete and up-to-date standings, schedule, stats, and information on your favorite team, as well as full-length match replays, highlights, and epic hands from all of our matches, and much, much more.
is moving slow Well, we've seen Las Vegas Moneymakers take the first three points of the match. There are still six more points to play for. I really like the attitude of Jonathan Little, the way they're looking at it. They're not 37 points uh, back. They're three points at a time back. And that's really the smart way to look at it, to not get to, you know, not feel the pressure, especially when you're in the cube. He's looking for nine points. That's all he can do today. The team will not be in the playoffs as of, you know, after today's match. So really a great, great, great way of looking at it. Very sporty way of looking at it, right? It's mm. very, I'm sure that's from Coach Moneymaker to say, don't worry about where we are in the standings for this match. Let him worry about that. But they need nine points and it just starts today. They're not going to pick up 50 points, so three at a time, and three so far is really good for, for what's happened. quite a tough feat, though, it to is, try and get is. that many points. Yeah, no, of course it is. But, I mean, again, they're 40 points out of uh, the conference championship, the, not out of the playoffs, so we need to look at that as well. So, you know, still, three points at a time, uh, but the problem is I don't think Mike Leah Le is going to let him uh, get away with any more points here. Uh, it doesn't get more competitive than, than these two guys. So it'll be incredible to see what happens next because they're really going to be upset if they don't pick up the uh, three, six, or nine points here today. Well, we saw at the end of that interview, didn't we? Well, I've scored this many points. Oh, I've scored this many points. Yeah, <laughs> not surprising to hear that from two guys that have uh, 300 combined results. Uh, we shouldn't be surprised by that. So they will really be fighting for this next match, I am sure. The Las Vegas Moneymakers, as we said, they do need it. They are bottom of the America's Conference right now. But Paris Aviators have managed to do so well during the start of the season. They've been flying high, top of the conference for many, many weeks. And just in the last two, three weeks of the online series, they have sunk down to fourth place. That must be disappointing for them. Yeah, things haven't gone their way at all in the last uh, little half here. It seems that where Montreal has picked things up, Paris has really, you know, it's really gone down for them. So it's just bizarre that it's, uh, you know, when one team has gone up, the other team, and they're not even in the same conference, but it just happened at the exact same time. So it'd be interesting to see what happens next. I mentioned Luno earlier. Uh, he's one of the players that should be in the cube in the, in the next few uh, weeks. You know, by far one of the top players in the game, and he's showing his might at the World Series of Poker right now. We are ready to go to game two of this match. Jonathan Little of the Las Vegas Moneymakers, they are already three points up. This is versus Mike Lear of the Paris Aviators. Let's see it happen. Oh, I hear music. I see cards. Okay. Eric, wearing this hair, this oh, hair. If I'm just messing up my hair. I'm not sure I can do this every day. Didn't want to say anything, but you are correct. <laughs> Should I take a jab at Mike and say that it's not disturbing yeah, his hair? Okay. I, yeah, won't, I, won't, I won't, I won't. No, that's mean. We're buddies, it's okay, it's okay. It's like wrapping the table. For those who love fantasy sports, Mike Leah literally plays every single fantasy sport out there for Small and very large amounts of money. Early over about. I think you probably have it. Correct. Correct mundo. It's hard to get called when they have king high or something. Did you raise me? Oh, you raised me, I see. What did you do? You called them. Yeah, I don't, I don't fold either. Okay. Mike opting for a jersey change for round two, hoping that the Kyle Lowry run good. I'd rather there be a fold. Goes button. his way. I don't like this swiping thing. Yeah, I don't like. I'm not a big fan. I thought this was the new fashion, wearing one over the other. He does have his I Heart Cornelia shirt underneath. <laughs> right here, I have to remember how much I made it pre-flop. So his confusing. face went ever yeah, so serious really then that. when he saw the Kings, didn't it? Under a thousand, right? I see. Kind yeah. of got his... Figured it out. This could end up being a very interesting hand this early in the match. Is that the call button? Is that the call button? If they put out another card, it means I called. 
It's a good point. To be fair, Mike has never really checked anything in his life when it comes to poker, so not used to clicking that check button. But there he is, two in a row. Jonathan gets it on the river. Throw the flush, you got it. Oh, oh god. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> True gambler. Brutal. What's going on now? This is the lucky iPad over here. You had you had the you had it and you swapped. <clears throat> Before we started playing, we could play a practice game and nice he, Mike had this iPad, but he voluntarily went over there. So it's his fault. I wanted to keep that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's pretty unlucky I got the eight because you know I don't fold otherwise. Uh-huh. I don't know if Mike is a superstitious guy. We'll have to ask him. A lot of sports guys are, so it'll be interesting to see. I can't imagine Jonathan is. He seems far too analytical. That's true. All right. Got it. I know how many chips you have now. <laughs> I'm getting all scatterbrained over here. Yeah. You can tell. That's what happens sometimes. <sighs> Mike's still holding the best hand with pocket fours and a juicy flush draw. Reminder that coming up after this match, right after this match, Marc Andre Ladestor, who has taken a plane, is coming in. Exclusively yes. the plate of GPL is leaving tonight. He will be in the ring, in the uh, cube facing Igor Yaroshevsky of the Moscow Wolverines. He's leaving tonight. Correct. He's got business to take wow. care of in Montreal. He will be back for the World Series of Poker very shortly. He must love the GPL. Loves the GPL. We go dark on Monday, but on Tuesday, he too continues. Tiago Nishiima who's been playing really well heads up. Sao Paulo against Justin Bonomo of London. That could be a highlight match of the oh, year so yeah. far. I'm excited to see Bonomo in the cube. We run down the rest of the heat too because there's some exciting matches here, Laura. Jason Wheeler versus Nano Noko on Wednesday. That is my match. Oh, yeah. Although Thursday's match is my match as well. Fedor Holtz and Sorel Mitzi. Oh, yeah, that will be brilliant. There might be blood in that one. If Sorel doesn't win, there might be blood in that one. I think the bear is going to come out and play for this one. Then Jonathan Jaffe and uh, Walter Trekariki will wrap up Heat 2 action next Friday. Never met Walter Trekariki. It's Walter, but it's fine. Volta. But he's a great, great uh, rising star in Italy. I'm excited to watch Fedor and Sorel interact, actually, because Sorel so chatty, Fedor not so much. Wheeler and Ananoko as well. That could, yeah. could be very interesting. Wheeler doing really well in the Millionaire Maker, though. Shocking that Shocking Jason Wheeler is doing well at tournaments. Yes. Many of our GPL stars in WSOP events right now. Yeah. In fact, the reason that Laura and I are here at the desk, just so you know, every single manager that is in Las Vegas has qualified for day two of the Millionaire Maker, which starts at the same time as us. So, of course, we wanted to let them play and get all those chips and bring that money to the GPL. So maybe we can get <laughs> some uh, Dunkin' Donuts tomorrow since Joe is gone. Oh, yes. I like the ones with the little sprinkles, please. While we were chatting, Mike Lea, with a beautiful hand here. You have the nuts. <laughs> you have uh, an ace. I have the nuts too. Yeah. I'm lucky. Everyone's got the nuts. What are you going to do? Coolers have them. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice. <sighs> Get 10-3 every hand. I've had 10-3 a bunch this time. So 
should incorporate it into your three bet range. I need to get pocket kings again. Ooh, a little jab from Leah there. Great. Much easier. They were great for me. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Uh huh. You're good when either one of us gets pocket kings. That's fine. <laughs> Cool icon says, Laura doing double duty. I am indeed. Oh, just gonna check raise me out of my seat every time, huh? Just king high flops. Just double duty today. I'd say more than that, actually. Yeah. Three or four. In case you're wondering what I was doing, I was preparing the coffee for the team this morning at the house, so there you go. It's a weird action. I was also the chauffeur. You were very, thank Costume, you, Laura. Costume, makeup. Printer. All right, we get it. You get, you get that raise. Okay, done. <laughs> Kid Fernandez says, Little is like Kevin Spacey in House of Cards. Gives his inner monologues to the camera. That's okay, a good comparison. He does yeah, look like a that. little Spacey-ish. I like that. Just want him to turn now. And <laughs> <laughs> side call or side fold? Side fold. Okay. One of the two. I wasn't sure which one. It's tough and heads up when they just win every pot from you. You're like, do they just have it? Or well, I know I don't have it. So if I don't have it, they probably have something. Sometimes. We mentioned earlier Jonathan being an accomplished author and instructor, really one of the you best no in the game. Knowing, knowing how many chips I have, you're good at it. Uh, well, now it's easy. I've never been short. So oh. <laughs> you've never been short, so it never really came up. Sick needle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one that's had to know how many chips I had. No use looking out there, Jonathan. Nothing. He just says nothing. You had something. Yeah, good, good yeah. check. I wasn't bold. Jonathan's lovely Thank wife you. is here watching. She can see him. He can't see her. He gets out of the zone. It means he has it. He doesn't care what he does. I don't care what Mike does. I have the nuts, obviously. Oh, fuck. Did you just mint three bet? Don't worry about that. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> What happens when they get too excited? Wait, that's it. Nails the 8-3, the 8-4, the 8-5, 8-6. Yeah, your whole defending range? 8-7. Just nails all of it. Shout out to Juice Juice one who just commented that I was the Vince McMahon of the GPL. I am not. I do not own the GPL. Lord knows I wish I would. And yeah, Kermit, that's a new one. That's a new one. Oh no, it's not. I've seen that one before. Kermit is not a new one. Is it about the green juice? Is it because I drink a lot of green juice? No, it's not <laughs> like that. I can be your Miss Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> Only love there, Juice Juice. Stick Look around. Fine. I know my stuff. You might get to learn a, a thing or two. Eric did make me one of his green juices the other day. See? Although I found out here. Coriander is not called coriander. Cilantro. Yeah. So many weird words. Good bluff, good bluff. You Thanks. get it. Okay, I'm the button this time. Don't forget. Physio Tim on Twitch, of course, commentating or letting us know that he loves this matchup, how the players are both being respectful. That's exactly who these two are. They really are, Two yeah. of the classiest players in poker. That being said, Laura, two of the most competitive as well, so. Yeah, I see. <laughs> I'm clearly weak on king high boards. here for Jonathan. Checks it.
two pair now versus a straight. That's an all in from Jonathan. That'll smirk and right before you. Be a call for sure. That heartbeat makes me nervous. <laughs> a little wink. The wink of death. All right. We're even. We're even. I, had, I didn't know I was all in. I wasn't slow rolling. I thought I had an option. You can slow roll if you'd like. I don't yeah. want to. <laughs> no, I wish, <laughs> I wish I did it on purpose. <laughs> that was a good river. Yeah, that was a good river for me. Never, never hurts to hit cards on the river. Mike Leah there, collecting the three big points for the Aviators. We keep on talking about those teams needing points, but it's true, folks. Both Paris and Las Vegas needing points for different reasons. Paris trying to stay afloat, while the Las Vegas moneymakers trying to get back in this race. It's three big points by Mike, who's really performed so well so far this season. One of uh, Paris's top players, really, really, um, you know, becoming a valuable asset to the team as a fourth-round pick. Uh, becoming the top scorer for that team is great. So really, really a great pickup by uh, Fabrice Soulier, a shocking pickup. Everyone at draft day, we, we did a lot of research there, folks, for the draft. Uh, you know, even I was lucky enough to get a few picks right. Uh, this one, I had no clue that was happening. Fabrice never told me about uh, the fact that he was uh, uh, thinking of drafting Mike, Le Mike. Mike, who's a friend of mine, had never, never, never mentioned that Paris might be on the board there. But uh, Mike really wanted to play in the GPL, really went out and talked to Fabrice and got himself on the team. Fabrice mentioned that the only players he wanted were players that were extra committed to the league, extra committed in passion for poker, so a great, great, great uh, pickup uh, by uh, by the the, uh, the the Aviators there. Three points uh, for the team. They're now three points clear on those playoffs, or three more points clear on those playoffs. That's exactly what that team wanted to do. Reminder that coming up next after this third game is uh, Moscow versus Montreal. That's Yarshevsky and La Douceur. La Douceur coming to Las Vegas exclusively to play this match. He's leaving later on tonight, has some business to take care of Montreal. But don't worry, fans, he will be back in the cube later on this summer as will the rest of the team. So far, there's a little challenge for some of the teams because in Las Vegas, for, uh, for Montreal, for example, only Martin Jakobsen is here, and Martin Jakobsen has been running deep in a lot of tournaments at the World Series of Poker. That's why Ladders are deciding to come in, and it's a good thing that he did because Jakobsen is already playing day two of the Millionaire Maker event. No surprise there. So good move by the manager, making sure that his horse was ready to and focus for the World Series, why he can come here and maybe improve on his standing. He's the sixth, uh, six out of six in score for that team, so Marc-Andre probably disappointed so far with the way things have gone for him. We'll see what uh, happens later on today. All right, my partner Laura has ran her, her little butt off, and she's ready for the interview after the second game. We'll see what Mike and uh, Jonathan have to say. Thank you so much, Eric. I am now on the floor. No clean sweep today, much to the disappointment of Jonathan Little. Congratulations, Mike Lear. Thank for you. the Paris Aviators, three points there. Yeah, it was, it's good to get that win out of the way. And then no fear of being swept, and now we both have a chance to win. So, What did you think of your opponent there? I'm, like, I respect John's game a lot. So, you know, it's, it's fun to play, and, uh, you know, we've had a lot of fun hands, and that last river uh, definitely went in my favor. So, It did, unlike yeah. the, uh, the first game. One apiece now. Feeling confident to take this down? Who's going to have it? You're both it's so mine, competitive. <laughs> I want one that he I won think one I'm going to leave gonna you to it again yeah. to, to argue this one out. How are you finding the intensity of the cube? Uh, it's it's awesome. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it was yeah. so. It would be more fun. It's more fun when you win, but it's <laughs> yeah. it's it's fun either way. It was so intense. Mike didn't even know he had the nuts on that last round. He was <laughs> so confused. It took me a little while to figure <laughs> out uh, if I could actually still raise or if he was already all in, but. So I unintentionally slow rolled him a little bit, but I wish I intentionally slow rolled him longer. I'm going to get you yeah, next Yeah, you should time. have done. Someone was saying yesterday that we should put a sofa in there or a chair for someone that wants to just uh, sit and wait for the hand. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's more fun if they think you're thinking. But yeah. True. Yes. When he went in the tank, I'm like, ha, I got him. <laughs> he has kings again. Yeah. So but then he had the nuts. Yeah. <laughs> and then I lost. Now yeah. I'm here. Yeah. A, a disgrace One to all chance. of Las Vegas. 
One more chance, don't you worry. Yeah. Talk us through this. Why have you got this one? I thought it was a new um, fashion trend. No? Yeah, no, I'm just paying <laughs> respect. The Raptors had a great season, so I wanted to represent them a little bit. And since I won the match in this jersey, we'll have to wear this for the next one. Okay, well, we will see who is to take this down. It is one apiece so far. Three points for the Money Makers. Three points for the Aviators. One more game to go. We will go back to the desk very shortly. But first, a little break. Can't get enough of the GPL? Head over to globalpokerleague.com for the most complete and up-to-date standings, schedule, stats, and information on your favorite team, as well as full-length match replays, highlights, and epic hands from all of our matches, and much, much more. Hello and welcome back. We've seen two GPL matches so far, two games. It is one apiece now between the Paris Aviators and the Las Vegas Moneymakers. I think that's the way we wanted it, Laura. We wanted yeah. it to be split and then they're going to play for that third third match here, the third game here. We keep on talking about the fact that those points are important, but they are. These two teams in different situations, but could find themselves in similar situations, especially, especially if Paris loses this, uh, this one. It, it could be, become dire for that team as the teams under them, especially San Francisco, uh, sorry, especially on the other side, are moving up there. So Rome and in Berlin, so we'll have to see what happens in this uh, next game. We talked about how competitive these two guys are. They really are. I can just sense it between them when I'm stood in the middle of them. It's a bit uh, bizarre to see uh, two people that are so classy and so nice to each other, but yet still want to rip their, each other's hearts out. So it's kind of uh, fun to see uh, to see it. They're both smiling, both being respectful, but I think deep down they both really want to hurt their opponent in their next one. Not physically, of course. We were talking a little bit before uh, I did the interview and uh, just talking about Mike, how many teams actually wanted Mike for their team. Yeah. Uh, he nearly uh, was on the Las Vegas Moneymakers at one point. I think many of those different teams on draft day wanted him, but it was Paris and Fabrice Soulier who managed to take him. Yeah, his uh, competitive spirit, and I think his love for sports, and especially fantasy sports, I mentioned that earlier. He's a big fantasy sports guy, but also very, very knowledgeable with sports. I think that brings an extra element to the team, and competitiveness, especially this is team poker. It's rare to see this form of poker. Uh, Mike really understanding the sports side of it, maybe sports psychology side of it, bringing that to the team team of players that are probably not used to playing as a team. So if we see Mike Leia here take another three points for the Paris Aviators, will that make much difference to them? Will that change their fourth place? They've already moved up, yeah. They've, They've moved up to moved third, up. moved up ahead of, uh, of the Hong Kong Stars. Hong Kong have not played yet, and Anoko back in the cube later on this week. So, yeah, I think it's good for them. They wouldn't match Moscow. So, really good news here if uh, Paris can move back up. Of course, matching those teams or, you know, moving up on teams, th this is the first game, or first match of the Heat. So, of course, all those other teams would have a chance to, uh, to move past them later on this week. We've seen two sweeps this week as well. It won't be another sweep today, but you just mentioned Anoko didn't have a great week this week, did he? No, he had to you know, face the mighty Montreal Nationals and Martin Jakobsen, and Jakobsen made a short work of uh, Nananoko. Really That's the did. second time. It's funny because Nananoko has been one of the stars of this league, but he's been swept twice now. So really, uh, really, I think uh, it's going to be a little scary for Selena Lin in this next match. We do know that a few more uh, Hong Kong stars are arriving in Las Vegas, and I do think they'll want to switch things up. Again, not of Nananoko's fault, just wanting to switch things up, hopefully uh, to get uh, maybe another streak going with another player. Raiden Khan, in fact, flies in the morning of the GPL match, but unable to make that one. So I think Nananoko is up against Jason Wheeler this week. That will be a good one to watch. Yeah. But first, let's go back to the action. It's game three here in the cube. This is Mike Lear of the Paris Aviators versus Jonathan Little of the Las Vegas Moneymakers. It's like either marginally What am I doing or with Vase Queen or whatever top pair it was there? Yeah, yeah well. Shit happens. Oops. <laughs> Pardon me. You're so vulgar. <laughs> Man. Yeah. 
Not quite like Kitty. <laughs> the tremendous Kitty Quo is in Las Vegas, is actually in the Millionaire Maker as well. I think everyone is in the Millionaire Maker except for you and I, Laura. Running deep, she will be uh, expected in the cube later on this summer. But Jaffe is back in on uh, Friday. Like, what is your stance? You know, mine is just this. His was. I guess it's good to have something so you don't maybe change. I don't know. It was interesting. Jaffe was taking quite a grip on yeah, the, uh, yeah. <laughs> the the stand. The first game. No one else we've seen do that. What was that? Winning. Winning. Yeah, <laughs> winning the first game. Didn't win the second game. Yeah. I like what happened the second game. Yeah. Get the opponent to spaz out. Mm, I think you just had it. <laughs> mm. Bad fold right here. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> I was just like, oh, I'll just try that delayed seat bed thing. Maybe it'll work. Oh, man. Let's stop folding. I heard you're a nit, but you're not such a nit, I don't think. <laughs> Who said I'm a nip? I need to play against them. <laughs> Who, uh, what happened? You bet. Who on your team would say I'm a nip? Wasn't on my team. Not Zena. Oh, not on your team. Okay. I know you're not a nip. All right. We played on the internet. <laughs> yeah. You're fiery. Mike Leah, many things, a knit he is not. Really gonna try and make me fold days high? Bet the flop, check the turn, bet the river. How much did you bet? The third pot. Could be an eight. It could just be no showdown value whatsoever. Let's see. Ooh, nines. You have a pair. Similar. I had a pair. I know. Wow. Same thing as a tie. Similar. Could have had three, two offsuit. What happened? Um, I'm the button. I raise. Yes, yeah, your turn. Thank you. Okay. We mentioned the millionaire maker. One player not in the millionaire maker, Alex Luno, doing very well in the oh, deuce hi. to seven. <laughs> He's busy. Uh, <laughs> If you're just joining us, Eric, Danny in a booth with Laura Cornelius. Joe is away for the next few days. There are thousands of people watching you play right now. Thousands? Could you, I mean, it's probably an extended more. Tinder date. A really amazing day, <laughs> Tinder date. Good for Joe. A Tinder holiday. Hello, Joe, Joe is on Twitter, Tinder tour. He's no, taking a tour of the East Coast. Anything else, and we are happy that you're here watching us. He's doing yes. the Kevin Spacey thing. Thank you. Unless I lose. Tell your friends and support the Global Poker League. <laughs> oh, I love this. Do it, Mom. What happened? Well, I'm going to win, oh. but I'm such a nit. <laughs> There's a lot of nit talk going on in this one. I went for light value. You like the thin value versus me for some reason. Mm, yeah. I'm the, Unfortunately, I've been wrong most of the time. What the hell's happening? I'm the big one. Okay. I raised. <laughs> <laughs> you called. Physio Tim owns a lot of Jonathan Little's books. Thinks he knows very, very much of the game. Yeah. Definitely true. here on the river. <laughs> I would have just folded quicker, but I had to wait for you to actually press in buttons. I think you can fold out of turn. Can you? I, we'll try it next time. <laughs> <laughs> Players can indeed 
fold out of turn. Not suggested, of course, in heads up action. Ed Cases, Luno and Danza, both top three in the 10K Deuce to seven. That is in fact why Mike Lear is here today. It was supposed to be George Danza. Twice he's done that to us. Just runs deep in another tournament. How he's dare now, he? He's now requested to play every day and hopes to cancel on us every day here in Las Vegas. Cali Icon, polite trash talk. It's true. It is, it's exactly <laughs> what it is. Thanks, Physio Tim Singh. It's great. We have an all in. Not much dramatic noise. And a fault. <laughs> <laughs> Very quick. Physio Tim says it's great players actively promoting the GPL and the Cube. Love the dynamic. And the players do too. It's been really wrong. obvious. They're really having a lot of fun than when they go in that Cube. No, absolutely. Yeah, it's probably good. Probably. Got the blocker, you know. If you get the blocker, you have to try it the first time. Back to Danzer for a moment. I was speaking with Fabrice Soulier earlier today. He was saying that George is very disappointed that he's had to cancel twice now, of course, for great reasons, but uh, does want to make his debut in the Cube. He was supposed to play Aaron Paul uh, during Heat 1. He was crushed by that. And of course, so were we, because it would have been made for some great television there, Laura, with the, uh, the great hair on George Danzer. Yeah. But speaking of great hair, it was Fabrice Soulier, and the loser did have to shave his head, and Fabrice is looking amazing. He does look Mike good. In a Mike Lea haircut. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Hmm. Is that half part? Physio Tim says it's going to be difficult to get Fedor in here then with him winning almost everything <laughs> he enters. He's supposed to be here on Thursday, June 16th versus Sorel Mitzi. And the good news, Laura, is that there is no $100,000 buy-in tournament on that day, so he's probably taking the day off, which probably means he's winning at cash games as well. Before we go to work, huh? I wish this was like here, you know? I, it's going to give me neck problems. It's like I'm trying to de deposit money into the Mike Lea ATM over here. <laughs> Come on, let me put it in. <laughs> Laura, this is a very sad week for me personally, as um, this week marks my three-year anniversary of my loan cash at the World Series of Poker, which oh. means that I will be unranked from the GPI. As of Wednesday, it's really heartbreaking. You better get yourself in one of them games then, hadn't you, boy? I can manage the, uh, the ship here. Laura Cornelius would buy me into the 10K stud. Thank you, Laura. Oh, it's already passed, sorry. Are you any good at stud? No. You're a bit of a stud. Thank you. Although I did take lessons from Mike Leah, we just didn't continue, but I am a very big fan of stud. On how to look like a stud? Yes. Obviously. Yeah, Mike Leah rep repping that Raptors jersey. <laughs> Green. Green is good. Finally give you one. <laughs> Jonathan's starting this with the upper hand. More chips in his favor. You can see that in the chip o Would you say chip o meter or chip o meter? Chip o meter. Okay. 85 big blinds versus Mike Lear's 39 big blinds. Both with two pair here.
Mm. Nice hand. Thank you. Nice check. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so good over here. Minimum value. Oh, well, not minimum. <laughs> Why go for maximum value and end the game whenever we could just sit around and keep playing for a while? Yeah, this is fun. It's what all the viewers want. Want to watch John Little win the minimum so you can laugh at him. Watch Mike just get unlucky the whole day and not go broke. <laughs> the quiet commentators are in the booth today. That's so you can hear the players, because that's what we heard you wanted to hear. No one wants to hear from Tannis and Cornelius. Mike Leah, the seventh top scorer in the GPL so far, moves into a sixth place tie with Nanonoko, who's played a few less matches. Jonathan Little, who is playing here for the Las Vegas Moneymakers, will be in the booth very shortly. He will be commentating on the next match of the day, which is Marc Andre Ladouceur of the Montreal Nationals versus Igor Yaroshevsky of the Moscow Wolverines. And that means he'll probably learn quite a lot. I'm not coming back because these headphones really mess up my hair. Confirmed. Our poor hairstylist oh. has been working overtime right now. I know. Yeah. All right, <clears throat> time for me to start winning some pots, I think, here. It's about that time. The all-in all moment. an important, important time. All-in segment of the game. Did you limp? We haven't had an all-in segment yet because one of us go broke, goes broke too quickly. Yeah, we almost got there the first time. Almost. chips I have now. It's good. Oh, then in a quick fold. Wise fold by Jonathan Little. Mike Lear just down to 17 big blinds now versus 82 of Jonathan Little. He is dominating this match so far. <laughs> oh, he was dropping. Let's put a eight of spades. Oh, that's a bad turn. It looks oh. like Mike is, yes. I didn't reward him for walking to his water too soon either. Mike Leah got caught here in this final hand and it is over. No, I don't think so. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Good game. Good game. Swap. Were you dropping your first lump? First lump was weak? No. <laughs> that may be the other way around. Jack seven the first time. And there you have it, a mega, mega victory by the Las Vegas Moneymakers. Look at this, the Moneymakers are no longer at the bottom of the basement in the Americas Conference. Good on Jonathan Little, another six points. He is now 3-0 in heads-up competition so far this year. He's played so well at a classic match against Kitty Quo that uh, everyone loved. Doesn't get any better than Kitty Quo on a uh, webcam or live in the queue, which we should see later on this summer. But Little really doing some amazing work in heads-up, now 3-0. And the Moneymakers now move ahead of the San Francisco Rush. That, of course, is temporarily as the Rush have not played their Heat 2 matchup. They go on Friday as Jonathan Jaffe will hope to, uh, to run good like he did in his first match and uh, pick up those nine points for the San Francisco Rush. Laura will be with us in the next few seconds here with Mike and with Jonathan. Reminder that this is not the end. At 1.30 Pacific time, we do have a second matchup for you. Marc-Andre Ladesor, the team manager of the Montreal Nationals, playing against Igor Yaroshevsky, who is been, uh, of course, for the past few years, dominating the World Series of Poker, playing so well over there. Both players competed at the GPI World Cup last year. We'll get to talk to them about that as well. So it'll be interesting to see how the, the two players uh, mesh in this format. Of course, uh, the, between Montreal and Moscow, 
two teams that have played really, really well to start the year. Montreal has just picked things up lately and they are dominating the whole league. Moscow had that opportunity earlier on this year. So Yaroshevsky, of course, will want to uh, add those points for the mighty uh, the mighty Moscow team. Moscow's team is filling up here in Las Vegas. Anatoly Filatov is here. He got here yesterday. He'll be in the cube shortly. Yaroshevsky in today and that's a great pickup, a great uh, selection uh, by uh, Filatov. Yaroshevsky, again, is always a top performer of the World Series of Poker, so his poker game is obviously on. So it'll be a big challenge for Ladisar, who's the sixth out of six sco scores for that Montreal team, although that's quite a, a feat because the top five are so strong right now in the league. So Ladisar, of course, will want to do well for his team since some of the other managers, as uh, as in Liv Boré, for example, have fared so well. It's always easier to, uh, to instruct your team on how to play or how things are going when you are uh, successful as well. Ladisar are hoping to switch things up after a tough six max debut and having to face Olivier Bousquet in heads up action, get winning one of those matches and actually playing very well and you know should have won that match in some in some sets or some might say. All right, let's take you to Laura Cornelius. She is with Mike Leah. She is with Jonathan Little, the winner of this match. Laura, down to you. I am indeed Jonathan Little. Congratulations winning that one. Two games. Thank to you. One. <laughs> He's smiling, yeah. but we know Smiling but dying on the inside. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no. How, did you enjoy it, though, deep down? It was a fun experience, of course. It's very disappointing to lose, but uh, John played great, and yeah, it was a fun experience. Your wife is here watching. Was that added pressure for you? It was. She said that if I don't win, then I can go live with someone else. <laughs> so I decided I better win. Oh, she's smiling. <laughs> uh, tell us about how it was different, like, you know, in there, stood up. You, you, I imagine you've never played poker standing up before. I have a standing desk at my house, so I stand up the whole, time, whole day. Facing <laughs> someone else, though. First time for that. Yeah. It, it was fun. I mean, I don't think Mike was giving away anything, so no? I think it was fun. Yeah, I tried to reverse level him once. I, he, I think he thought I was strong <laughs> when I looked over there to the crowd and got him one time, but, mm -hmm. yeah, you know. You try little things, experiment. It was a very unique experience for sure. sure. Nothing like it, so it was cool. You were looking over to the crowd, but you can't see out of that thing. But I know they can see me. Yeah. It's like whenever you're streaming on Twitch. You, you know, you don't That's actually true. see all the thousands mm. of people out there, but you know they're watching. Okay. So you got to play to the crowd. Well, at least you picked up three points, though. It's not all bad. It wasn't a clean sweep. Correct. That would have been embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to have you in the commentary booth very shortly. Awesome. Yeah? I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to. We're going to... See a different side of you, obviously. When we see you play online, you offer all your piles of wisdom. You couldn't really do that in there. Otherwise, it uh, might give a few things away. Yeah, I can't tell Mike everything I'm <laughs> thinking in the hand. That would not work out too well for me. But you can yeah. change it around now. And while you're commentating, you can go back to that. It's interesting because whenever I'm playing online, I'm, I have no problem commentating. But I don't know how to do actual table talk with people. I, never, I don't have much experience with that. And it's a very different game. So yeah, maybe I'll sure. learn that between now and the next time I play. Someone on Twitch actually said, this is posh trash talk. Like, a polite trash talk. <laughs> You're, you were too nice to each other, almost. Yeah. We know each other fairly well, but maybe not well enough to go uh, too, too harsh trash <laughs> talking. Well, we but, enjoyed it. All right, good. Thank you so much, uh, Las Vegas Moneymakers, taking this one down, taking six points for Chris Moneymakers' side. Back to you, Eric. All right, uh, thank you, Laura. Thank you, Mike, and thank you, Jonathan. A really fun match to watch here. In a few seconds, we'll take a look at how the in, in fact in, uh, impact. Sorry, the standings in both conferences. We kept on talking about the fact that Las Vegas no longer in the gutter. Here they are now, sitting in fifth position. Jonathan had it right. I mean, these are baby steps for the team. They're in a pretty rough position at the moment, but you can't worry about the fact that you're 40 points out of first place. You know, just think of those three points at a time. Really, really smart strategy there. Not surprising coming from a team manager, Chris Money maker he has a sports background and knows how those uh, those things tend to work you only you only do as much as you can nine points were available to him he'll he's be he, he will be very happy with six that's a third time now that he wins uh, he wins uh, matches let's take a look at the standings when we have a, a while we have a minute before a closing talk, talk, Talking maybe America's conference started first since we're talking about those money makers, and here they are. They're the first team out of the gate in uh, session 26. 77 points now for the money makers. Two points clear on the San Francisco rush. Jonathan Jaffe will try to uh, to to do what he did a few weeks ago, or sorry, a few days ago, and pick up more points for that team on Friday. The Nationals are next, and the Nationals are dominating the GPL so far. 115 points. That's 14 points ahead of the LA Sunset, second top team in the league. So that'll be curious 
to see how many points Marc-Andre Ladoucer can add to his team. If Ladoucer can sweep here, I really think that Montreal suddenly are the team to beat for the rest of this year. They will be in total control of their own destiny. You want to win the conference. That's the first thing these managers have been telling their players. Win the conference first and then worry about uh, the playoffs in San Diego later on. Let's take a look, a quick look at the Eurasia standings. Again, this is not the worst of the scenarios for Mike Lea. Three big points there. You'll see the team moving up to uh, 92 points. They're now good for third in the in the conference. Again, the issue is that the team, the teams under Leia's uh, Aviators have yet to play this week, including Nananoko, who plays Jason Wheeler of the New York Rounders later on this week. He will have an opportunity to get back up in those standings. But they do they do now or sorry they are now three points back of the Moscow Wolverines. It's still three very valuable points there from Leia and for that team. Let's talk about the next match because it is a match that I've been anticipating for a while now. Marc-Andre Ladoucer, we keep on saying it, but he flew down to play this match, wanting Martin Jakobsen to concentrate on World Series of Poker duties. And that's a good move by Ladoucer as, La, as uh, Jakobsen has qualified for D2 of the money, the millionaire maker uh, out there at the Rio. So Ladoucer in exclusively for this match, leaving tonight. Boy, it must be nice to have those uh, those private jets. Kidding, it's on a commercial flight. But Ladisar is here to, to battle Igor Yarshevsky of the Moscow Wolverines. That'll be their first time in the cube. Both teams faring well so far this year. We saw that Moscow in second place in that Eurasia Conference. Montreal just dominating. It really is important here for both of these two teams. But for Montreal, if Ladisar could sweep, that really, really could put a ton of pressure on the other teams in the league. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. That match, by the way, starts at 1.30 Pacific time. 4.30 Eastern, and that's 10.30 uh, over in CET time, 9.30 if you're in, uh, in, British, in the British zone. So we'll be able to check that out uh, later on. Jonathan Little will be my co-host for that match. So that'd be interesting to see what he thought of his first time in the Cube and get some really extraordinary knowledge from Jonathan Little, one of the best uh, mentors in poker. So it'll be fun. Maybe I can actually improve on my game. I doubt that, but we'll see what happens there. For Laura Cornelius, the corn dog, who did some great work again today. She is a rock star, so I hope you give her some, some love on the Twitch chat. I'm Eric Danis, and we will see you in a few minutes. Can't get enough of the GPL? Head over to globalpokerleague.com for the most complete and up-to-date standings, schedule, stats, and information on your favorite team, as well as full-length match replays, highlights, and epic hands from all of our matches, and much, much more. Slow. 